Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's Midweek Devotional. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Joseph LaBeouf, and I'm the Director of Youth Ministries here at University United Methodist Church. And we are so glad that you've decided to join us today uh, for this conversation. So for those of you who maybe this is your first time joining us, first we want to say welcome. We're so glad that you've decided to join us for the first time. But um, so Midweek Devotionals is a time for us to kind of dig in a little bit deeper either for the next week's teaching or talking about um, this past Sunday's teaching in a way for us to kind of dig a little deeper in the middle of the week. Because spoiler alert, church is not just a one day a week event. And in fact, as you read through the Bible, you see the early church in the New Testament wrestling with this. They don't have all the fancy buildings. They don't have all the nicest couches. Uh, they don't have all these awesome pillows and things like that. Uh, they don't have the Sunday morning coffee. They're, they're a people that are learning how to interact with God and with others after Jesus, right? And so this past Sunday, uh, for those of you who don't know, was Pentecost Sunday. And now Pentecost was this time where uh, there was all of these people gathered in this one place and God sent the Holy Spirit down upon his people to comfort and to guide and to protect and to uh, keep us safe and allow us to have that relationship with God through this process. And so that's what we read this past Sunday. And I kind of want to dig a little bit deeper into that specifically. So today, if you have your Bible, we're going to be in Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. And so I, I basically gave you a short synopsis of it. All these people are gathered here trying to wrestle with this uh, on Pentecost. And it says here in chapter 2 that suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. And it filled the entire house that they were sitting in. And then all of these people from all of these different um, races, uh, countries, all of these things, they all start talking in these languages that they've never had before. Uh, and so basically that would be the equivalent of myself, who I'm not very fluent in another language such as French or Spanish. All of a sudden they're talking in French and Spanish, even though they've never learned, they've never taken a class in high school, all of these things, and they're just speaking in all these languages to each other. Now, the part that I want us to focus on here, though, is actually in verse 11. It says that Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. I'm going to read that again. Cretans and A Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. So there's kind of two things from that phrase that I want us to focus on in the sense. Number one is that they're speaking in their own languages. Now, we kind of touched on that a little bit, but I also kind of want us to think a little bit differently about it as far as how do we take that passage and relate it to today? And I think kind of the thing for us to really dig into is to ask the question, what language are we using when we talk about God? What language are we using when we talk about God? And I'm going to kind of dig into a little bit of that. Are we speaking to everyone as if they've grown up in church? Are we speaking to everyone as if they just all of a sudden understand what Pentecost and all of these other passages that they understand all the church ease, they understand the different seasons of the church. Are we just assuming that people know about God or about the Bible or about Christianity? Or are we speaking in their own languages and trying to take what we're learning about how we're living our lives and are we sharing that in such a way to make sure that there are no assumptions and that everyone has a place of welcome. And that's a tough thing to do. It's not necessarily easy. And um, so my first experience with this really was uh, 
in college at the Wesley Foundation where we were at. We took a mission trip in the summer to the Bahamas. Now, obviously, th that going overseas was kind of this uh, new thing for me. And in fact, I'd never even gotten on a plane before, but yet had to hop on like six to eight planes over the course of the trip. So we go overseas and uh, we get there and you, you don't really know what to expect whenever you're going to these places. Uh, and so we get there, we get to this complex and kind of just opening my eyes and just asking questions, trying to understand more about their culture and to see even the differences between us in America and the people of the Bahamas and their differences in the way that they have to approach life in general, the way that they even interact and even talk about their faith. And so uh, on the specific island that we went to, Eleuthera, Christianity was taught in public schools. There was no separation of church and state. And, you know, this, that, or the other, however you feel about that, I did notice that uh, in that, every where I looked, it almost seemed like every break that they had, they were digging into some kind of devotional, they were digging into the Bible, they were interacting, and in fact, the way that they live out their lives is in such a way of gratitude and appreciation, and even just acknowledging their fellow brothers and sisters. In fact, it was even rude if you were walking on the street and uh, you didn't acknowledge someone with just a little hand raise. That was very rude in their culture. And so I say all that to say is that the way that I looked at life was completely different from them, but yet we were able to have this conversation about God and to relate in each other's ways just by simply taking a second to look and understand that there is a difference in the way that our lives are lived out and that there is a difference. God is the same, but yet the way that we experience him can be different. And in the second part, I want to kind of look at, and that is speaking about God's deeds of power. So it's not just that they're talking to one another in languages that are different from their own and relating in that way, but they're also sharing about what God is doing in their lives. They're sharing their stories of power and transformation as the early church is trying to wrestle with what just happened with Jesus on the cross and understanding what that meant for their lives today. And so that's kind of really the two challenges that I want for us. And so this week, I want us to really focus on three things. And so can we sum down into reflect, pray, and do? So reflect pray, and do. So this week, I want us to first reflect. What deeds of power have you seen God do in your life? For me, there's tons of different ones. Uh, not being too far out of college, just seeing that as I was putting my trust in God, uh, just magically things around me were just being taken care of in the sense of um, yes, there was still stress, there was still worry, but I ultimately had what I needed at the right time if I just trusted in God. And so, uh, reflect, and then I want us to pray. Take a second and pray each and every day for God to show us who we can share his power with. See, because the Holy Spirit as it was kind of hinted around at this past Sunday for people that joined us, the Holy Spirit was given to us, not just for us to have this personal relationship. Yes, that's important, but also for us to share the Holy Spirit with other people and to share in God's power. So reflect, what are the good deeds of power? Pray for who may come along our path for God to show us who we need to share it with. And the final ones do. Which is just simply when the opportunity arises and God has shown you, you feel that prompting to share it with someone else. It might be in the grocery store. It might be uh, at the bank. It might be uh, tons of different places at the gas station. I want you to share with others in their language. So share with others in a tangible way 
take away all the the church tradition, the church ease. Yes, that's important, right? But let's remove all the assumptions and share with who God's shown us to of his power and his deeds that makes God so great. Um, So a recap, reflect, pray, and do. And so I just want to thank all of you so much for joining us this week for our midweek devotional. We're so happy that you took the time out of your day to join us. And so uh, we'd also love to hear in the comments below uh, after you've reflect, reflected, prayed, and done. We would love to hear your stories of what comes out from that in the comments section below of this video. Um, or even just to share it with us later in the week in a post and tag us in it. We would love to hear your stories come in of that. Uh, and so thank you again for joining us and we hope to see you right back here, same time, same place for next week's midweek devotional. Have a good week.